And joining me now with reaction from uh, the governor's state of the island address is re uh, Republican majority, uh, minority yeah. leader, I'm sorry, uh, Senator Frank Blas Jr. Tell us uh, a little bit about your thoughts uh, of the governor's speech. Well, I, I appreciated the governor and his candor, um, his forthrightness with regards to, to the state of the island where, where we're at today. But, in, you know, and in, in, in also bringing out the issues and the problems that exist, the solutions. And I'm very optimistic, uh, uh, you know, in, and and look forward to not only working with him and his administration, but uh, you know, with my colleagues, so that we can take advantage of these opportunities that 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 do lay before us. And uh, you know, again, it's it's optimism. You know, there 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 was the despair, but it's now up to us to be able to take on that challenge to make things uh, to make things right, and and the opportunities right. And now, the governor also had um, some very strong uh, strong words for Congress as far as FENA, uh, they're not going to sell any water. Um, and then he also talked a little bit about uh, what's owed for Guam, and you've been a big proponent of uh, compact impact, war reparations, et cetera. Um, so I'm sure you are pleased to hear that in, in the governor's speech as well. Yes, I am very, I'm very pleased. And I'm very pleased not, you know, to hear that there is a commitment by the administration, by, by Governor Caldwell and his administration, to be able to, to move forward and being able to deal with this. I, I, I do, though, um, and with regards to, to uh, one, one, one claim that, that, that was made that uh, the, our, our congressional representative had no knowledge and it was, it was a, through the dead of night that, that several provisions in the, in the, in the current NDAA uh, were, were put in without her, her knowledge. She knew about it. She, didn't, she failed to tell us about it. Uh, and as a result of you know, her basically sleeping at the wheel, We've got a lot of work to do in being able not only to be able to ensure Congress. First off, uh, we are, we're, we're not second-class citizens, and uh, you know the, the the things that they wanted to, to, to impose on us, we would, you know, I, I think that in any other place you would have found that that Congress would have looked uh, to to, their, to to those people uh, for the decision-making process that wasn't afforded to us, and our Congresswoman, you know, was in Fort Worth with us in as far as. Uh, you know when these things were occurring. All right, thank you so much, Senator. And we've also got the chair of the military buildup. We've got Democrat Senator Judy Guthards. You were actually recognized uh, during the governor's speech uh, today uh, for your leadership with this buildup. What were your overall thoughts? The governor obviously had some strong words for the military as well. Well, I'm very pleased that he put the military on notice that this is not really a slam dunk, the buildup that it must be respectful of the people of Guam and it must contribute to a better quality of life for all the people of Guam, our military friends and our civilian community. And that's been my message for three years. We can make this work if we help each other along the way and if we're realistic in our goals. And I think uh, the governor has uh, presented that perspective uh, in a way that was not presented uh, in the previous administration. Uh, I've worked very well with him on the build-up issues. Uh, part of my responsibility is to let him know what some of the impediments are and for us to work together to overcome these impediments. And I think he appreciates that and I appreciate his leadership uh, so far on the build-up. There was also a lot of discussion about uh, the financial situation of the government, and I know that that's been a concern for you as well. Um, alarming news hearing that the public auditor may come out with a $300 million deficit uh, from $89 million. Um, the governor obviously offering some solutions, willing to work with the legislature. What were some of your thoughts? Well, first of all, I think the governor is very pragmatic. Uh, uh, certainly, I would not support any tax increases on our island. And I think the governor, uh, as a uh, former senator, knows the sentiments of the legislature with, refers, with reference to any potential tax increases. That would not work. We've really got to get a hold of the government, make it perform better, make it be more efficient, and make people more accountable. I think we should war, uh, reward employees that perform well. I think we should do hold those accountable who don't perform well and uh, have them change their ways or perhaps leave the public service. But the point is that uh, there are remedies to the issues facing this community. And Governor Cabell has his perspective. We also have our perspective. Hopefully we can meet along the way so our perspectives join. One last thing is, is I think one of the biggest messages the governor even got a standing ovation for it was uh, the, his comments about Fena is not for sale and the water it will not be sold. Um, what were your thoughts? Well, we've been saying that for weeks, and as a matter of fact, the legislature, uh, through the leadership of Senator Tom Addis, Senator Spiegel, and myself, and other senators, we've put a, a strong resolution together 
that will be considered uh, next week in a public hearing, which basically opposes any uh, purchase of uh, FINA and also opposes any uh, requirements that we accommodate three individuals who sit on the CCU board who are not elected to the board from the military. Sounds good. Anything else you'd like to add about this? No, I thought it was a good uh, beginning. Uh, uh, it's very idealistic, and we actually live in a pragmatic world and that idealism may not turn into reality in many cases, but we're willing to work with the governor to try to make his vision work. I don't think it's inconsistent with our vision for Guam's future, and I look forward to working with him. Thank you so much, Thank Senator Guthards. That's a wrap from us here at the legislature. Actually, we, let me add on, we've got Senator Ben Pangolin in here uh, joining us now um, to tell us a little bit about his thoughts. The governor obviously talking a lot about the financial situation of the uh -huh. government, and you have been out there saying, you know, uh, the administration's come out and said we've got a cash crisis, and, and you've kind of been on the other end saying, well, show us the numbers, uh, show me what you're going to do with it. Uh, what did you think about the governor's fiscal plan and, and what was presented today? Well, it, it appears that the government wants to borrow more money. And I think that that's really has been the objective all along with the saying there's such a huge cash crisis would be let's borrow more money. I'm glad that if he says he's going to borrow more money that it will be to pay for tax refunds because that's the only borrowing that I will uh, certainly work and cooperate with at this time. Um, I'm a little sad today. I think that finally we've come to a point where the Chamorros don't exist on this island anymore certainly didn't exist in the governor's speech. Uh, tomorrow history on Guam is 4,000 years long, maybe 6,000 years long. Guamanian history, whatever that is, is maybe 20 years, 40 years, and yet not one single uh, allocate or uh, recognition of the 40 year, 4,000 year contribution of the Chamorros to Guam. Everything's Guamanian now. And I am sad. I know people may say, well, you know, you're not focusing on the right thing. Well, to me, that's what really matters most if you're from Guam, is the history of this place and the history of the people of this place. And when you talk about the history of this place on Earth, this brightest star in the Pacific, you have to talk about the Chamorros. And there was no mention of them at all in this speech. And it's a sad day. Uh, well, he, you know, he did mention um, who he thought some of the heroes were. Um, and you heard those today, obviously. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, he talked a little bit about the programmatic agreement and some about the military buildup as well. What were your thoughts on those comments? Well, my position on the programmatic agreement is it gives too much control over the development and the destruction of our history to the military. That was my one problem with it. And I continue to believe that even with all the changes that were made, we're just selling the destruction of our history for, you know, 2000 a million dollars here, a million dollars there, in order for the military to do what they want. Uh, so I don't believe it advances the protection of our history is that programmatic agreement. I think it, uh, ad it advances the destruction of our history for the dollar. Aside from the, the history of the Chamorros that you would have liked to have heard um, in the governor's State of the Island address today, is there anything else that you, you were specifically hoping to hear or looking for? Um, I think we heard a lot about the financial situation of the government um, and their plans, this administration's plans uh, moving forward. Uh, cooperatively with the legislature, uh, but is there anything else that you felt or wanted to hear that you didn't? Well, there were no details, number one, of course, and maybe this is not the place for it. But you know, for the last, we've sent five, six uh, follow-up letters. Uh, there's no more talk of transparency, uh, maybe because of the fact that they're not responding to requests from uh, the members of this body. Um, we still haven't gotten the reports that we've been promised uh, to outline uh, the obligations of this government, where the money's being spent. We collected over close to... $200 million in the first quarter of this fiscal year. We can't get a report of where that money was spent. We've asked for the administration to quantify how much we're spending for the health insurance because we know we're going to have a huge shortfall. We can't get that number. You know, three months later is just not, uh, not transparent. It's no longer we're working on it. It's just, I think, being no longer transparent. 
Thank you so much, Senator. Thank I appreciate you. it. And again, those are reactions from members of the legislature. We will, of course, bring you more tonight on primetime as well as News Extra. Reporting live from the legislature in Hagania, I'm Mindy Egan. Back to you in the studio.